Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's YouTube live event. I am so glad that you're here joining me. If this is your first time at Lisa's Stamp Studio, my name is Lisa Curcio. I'm so glad that you're here to stop by. You may not be here for the live. You might be watching the replay, but I'm so glad that you stopped in. Couple things before we get started, because we're gonna dive right into some stamping tonight. First of all, if you would like to chat while you're live here on YouTube with us, you'll need to log into your YouTube account. That would be your Gmail address. That's gonna be required in order for you to do some chatting. The second thing is I wanna introduce you to Megan Justice. Those of you that are live will see Megan's name in blue and there's a small wrench next to her name. She is my virtual YouTube assistant. Now, obviously when my head's down at the stamp table and I'm busy stamping and talking, it's really hard to catch a lot of your comments. So Megan chimes in and tries to help me and answer those questions. It's really great to have you guys here. All right, what do you say we get started? Here we go. Give me just one second to get you all zoomed in and get you a good angle. And I wanna make sure that I refresh my iPad so I can get a glimpse of what you're saying. I've got a small piece of grid paper here. Let me just straighten out this camera really quick, guys. There we go. I wanna make sure you get the best view you possibly can. The small grid paper is wonderful because if you don't have the big one, this works great if you're like tight on space. I know some of you have told me you actually stamp on a card table. So these little mini gar uh, grid sheets are great. Now remember that you're gonna be able to purchase everything you see here tonight in my online store. We'll chat a little bit about that. We'll put some links down below when we get started. Tonight, it's a little bit different. We've got something different planned for you. I've got a card sketch or a layout idea that I'm gonna show you three different projects on. Now I'm gonna demonstrate one and I've got completed samples for the other. I am gonna start with the Buffalo Check background stamp. Now you're gonna notice this is a really thick stamp case because I am a fan of buying my background stamps and wood. And I know some of you are thinking, you've got to be kidding, Lisa, that's old school. Yeah, I know, but I really like to use them like this and I'll show you why, because I use them in an unconventional way. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here and I'm gonna be stamping on that. So I've got my real red ink pad and I'm gonna leave that stamp right on my stamp table and I'm gonna ink it up. And you wanna make sure whenever you've got these detailed background stamps that your ink pad is well inked. There's nothing worse than having areas that don't have consistent coverage. So that's gonna require your ink pad has a really nice juicy feel to it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cardstock and I'm gonna center that right on top. I am not even going to lift this stamp. Background stamps are very, very large and a lot of you tell me how hard it is for you to lift them. I'm right there with you. I've got arthritis in both of my hands, so it's really difficult to kind of stretch them. But what I'm doing is I've placed that small grid paper over the top, and by rubbing, I'm keeping my hands clean because obviously it's protected, but I'm transferring the design from the bottom up. So you wanna take your time, you wanna make sure you don't miss a spot. I know for this card, I'm not gonna need the whole thing, so I'm not gonna be uber careful. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that paper and with my pickup tool, I'm just gonna kinda of gently just lift that up. So there we go, we've got a perfect background. No more having to fumble with these large stamps and trying to turn them upside down to stamp with them. So I'm hoping that that tip tonight is going to help some of you. I'm just gonna set this off to the side. Of course, you can clean it on your stamp and scrub or your chamois. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now, just ahead of the video, tonight, I actually took a piece of this and I cut it down a little bit smaller. So I've gotten this. I'm gonna save this because obviously I'm gonna make more cards. The great thing about this is you stamp it once and for this card sketch, this layout that we're using tonight, you're gonna to be able to get multiple cards from this one stamped image. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring in a clean piece of grid paper and we're gonna do some stamping. But before we do that, I wanna give you guys a little bit of a tip regarding this punch. This is called the tailored tag punch. I don't know if you know this or not, but it will make a mitered tag corner. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I placed a real small black Sharpie dot in there. I'm not sure you guys are gonna be able to see it in the video, but it's way down inside of there. I've got another light on, but I think there's still a little bit of glare. I'm gonna use my um, take your pick pickup tool to kind of point to it, but it's right here. There's an X inside this punch, and at the very tip of this X, 
indicates the corner here that's going to give me that miter. So I'm going to show this to you two different ways because if you don't have the punch, obviously you can purchase it in my online store. But I'm going to teach you another way as well. So I'm going to take this cardstock as an example and I'm going to stick that inside of here. Remember that little dot is here at the bottom of the X. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to end up with the tip of my cardstock on that dot. And I'm looking to make this as even as I possibly can. And that is going to give me that mitered corner. Do you see it? And then you can go ahead and do the exact same thing on this side. The trick is to make sure that you have it lined up about the same so that you have even ends like I do here. Now, let's say you don't have the punch. I always like to give you alternatives. Here's a piece of thick whisper white cardstock. This is where I'm going to be doing my stamping. And I'm going to do the tag corners punch first so that you can see it. Take your scissors and cut off one corner. This little piece of paper is going to be your template for the other corner. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to line it up right here. Now, some of you are probably thinking, no way. I'm telling you what, this works really, really good. If you want to, you can place a glue dot underneath there and that will hold it in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use that as a template to cut away the other side. And look at that, you've got two perfect corners. Isn't that awesome? So I've showed you a way with the punch and a way with a pair of scissors. I'd like to give you lots of options. All right, now let's do some stamping on here. For this particular layout, remember I've got two others to share with you. I'm gonna be using the Let It Ride stamp set. The sketched imagery in this stamp set really caught my eye. I think that these horses look incredibly majestic. And you know what, they are. But I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to love coloring these. But I've got some coloring tonight. I'm actually going to do it from start to finish with you, which is not something that I typically do when I'm live. Because, you know, if you like to color like I do, it can take a bit of time. But I'm going to show you how easy it is. Since I'm using my Stampin' Blends, I'm going to be using Memento ink. This is a water-based ink with alcohol-based markers. That's very, very important that you remember that. I'm going to highly recommend the Thick Whisper White cardstock. This cardstock actually lays the color down better and blends it better than the regular Whisper White. So from that stamp set, I'm grabbing the phrase that says, Take Life by the Reins, and I'm going to ink that up. And because sometimes I'm a little zealous, I look to make sure I don't have ink around the circumference of the rubber. And then I'm going to stamp that down here on the lower left side. All right, and then I'm going to switch over now to that image of the horse. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ink that up. I was looking to see if I got my finger in that ink pad because then you know what's going to happen. I'm going to get that all over my card. Who else does that besides me? And then I'm going to stamp that right here. Lots of firm pressure. Remember, these are beautifully sketched images. You want to get those details out. Another tip for you. If you are using grid paper underneath while you're stamping, take off that excess ink here before you take it to your chamois or your stamp and scrub. That's going to save you trips to going rinsing it out. Because I don't know about you, that thing can get pretty dirty after a while if you've been doing a bunch of stamping. So I'm going to close up that ink pad. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some coloring on this image. I'll flip that over just so that's not so distracting for you. I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Blends. And I'm going to be using several colors here. I'm going to be using my Crumb Cake Combo, which is the light and the dark. Now these are sold individually or they're sold in a combination. It's completely up to you on how you want to purchase them. There is not a price reduction for the combo. So it's $9 for both of them or $4.50 each. I love that we sell them individually because if one runs out of ink because you've used it like a workhorse, no pun intended, you can just replace the one. So what I'm gonna do, because this is a fairly large area, I'm gonna use the brush tip on my Stampin' Blends. And you're gonna notice that they're labeled by the line that's here underneath the cap. The thick line indicates the thicker end of the tip and the thin line indicates the chisel tip or the nub, however you wanna call it. Now the caps lock on to make sure that the alcohol doesn't evaporate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down color with this light of my horse. I am not even gonna be neat about it. The one thing about these larger images is they are super duper easy to color with your Stampin' Blends. And I'm going to give you some tips about that along the way. Now, I know you all can do that. And I know you're probably thinking, well, you're missing some areas. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to slide you in a little bit closer 
so you can see a little bit more detail as I move on. So that was the light. I'm going to move in now with the dark and I'm going to add some highlights. I'm going to add some up here along the mane, down here along his jawline, around his nose, and you can tell it's not pretty and that's okay. The trick to blending these colors is to go back to the light one and blend them together so that you don't have those harsh lines. Now sometimes harsh lines are good depending on what your image is. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to blend these together. And you can see there's like you know, no technique here whatsoever. I'm just going to go ahead and add some color. Now I'm going to add even more color yet. I am going to bring in the bronze Stampin' Blends. Now this was intended for a flesh tone, but it's also a beautiful bronzy brown that I love, especially for these types of images. So I'm going to take that brush tip again, and this time I'm going to add some detail inside the mane and maybe around the ears. So a little bit here, a little bit there, just so I can bring some continuity in that color. Now you can obviously see the line difference. So I'm going to go back to the light and I am going to blend that again. Now, the one thing about alcohol-based markers with the Stampin' Blends is you really can't overblend, to be quite honest with you. You can go over it and over it until you're happy with it. And you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I want this to look very sketched and very, very uneven. So I want it to look really rugged, which I think it does. All right, I'm going to set those aside. The next thing I want to do on my tag is I want to add a little bit of a focal point here at the top. And I decided to do that with my three quarter inch circle punch. And I've got a scrap piece of real red cardstock here that I'm going to use. Now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna give you a tip you may not know about. And I'm gonna see if you can see this or not. Do you happen to see the line right here down in the center? Do you know that's the halfway point of your punch? A lot of people think that it should go this way. And that would kind of make sense, right? Because we typically hold it like this. But that line indicates the halfway point. And I only want a half a circle. And this is going to guarantee that I'm going to get just that half a circle. So I'm going to line it up and I'm going to punch. So there we go. We've got that half. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring in my silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love, love, love this product. This is going to keep my work surface sticky free. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some adhesive to the back of this. Now, of course, you can use liquid glue. You can use a glue dot, but I'm going to use adhesive tonight because I think it's big enough. I can get it on there. So I'm going to hold this down and I'm going to add a little adhesive to the back. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to slide this over so you can see it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that flat edge here against the top of my tag. So let me just line that up the best I can. I'll get my hand out of the way. There we go. So we've got a little bit of decoration here at the top that's going to help coordinate. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a little something there. Now, obviously, you can poke a hole and you can put all kinds of things through there. But I want to teach you something else. And what I'm going to be using is some of the burlap ribbon. I'm loving this stuff. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but you can actually separate these strands and pull out just one strand from the burlap itself which is really fantastic for these types of cards because it's going to give us a real natural look. So I've pulled one out ahead of time. This is about 18 inches. So rather than cut myself multiple strands, I am taking this full 18 inches and I am folding it in half. So let me just find my ends here. I'm going to match those up the best I can and I'm going to fold it in half again. So now it's even smaller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make what I call an air knot, which means I'm just going to make a knot right in the air. Let's see if I can do this while you're all watching me and my head's kind of far away from the table. There we go. That's pretty good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere that and I'm going to use a glue dot for that. So I'm going to bring in my glue dots. I'm going to fold back the paper to reveal just one of the dots here. I know that might be a little bit difficult to see here on camera because it is clear. I'm going to take that knot and I'm going to place that right on the glue dot and I'm going to press that in place. And then when I lift it, the glue dot is on the back. Now, if any of the glue dot is exposed to the front, all you have to do is just kind of curl it to the back. And then I'm going to place that here so that it sticks on my card. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my scissors now and I'm going to cut open these loops and I'm going to give this a little bit of a haircut and trim away those ends. So I've got a little bit of a whimsical kind of braided almost a lasso kind of looking type of element here. Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh my gosh, you just made a huge mess on your silicone craft sheet. Yeah, 
And because it's silicone, you'll find it difficult to kind of just brush off when you have fibers like this. I don't know if you've seen me use this or not, but this is one of those sticky lint rollers. And let me tell you what, it works like a charm. Sometimes those household little gadgets work great in our craft room too. So let me slide that off to the side. And let's start by putting this card together now. I'm going to be taking a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. I'm going to move you out just a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. This is just a layer. And then I've cut myself a piece of designer series paper. I am loving this designer series paper. This is called the Wood Textures Designer Series Paper. And it's here in the annual catalog on page 191. The patterns are fantastic. So we've got everything from some lumberjack logs, what I call, clear down to different shades of wood grains, including even some whitewashes, which are really popular right now for those farmhouse styles. Now, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the current annual catalog and the occasions catalog, by all means, leave me a comment below. I will be more than happy to get those in the mail to you. And I'll be sure to include copies of the current sale brochure. The products in this catalog are free with either a $50 product order before shipping and tax or a $100 product order with shipping and tax, depending on how big your wish list is. Free with any order of your choice. You're going to want to get your hands on those, and I'll include those with your free catalogs. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to adhere this layer to the white cardstock, and I'm a big fan of that silicone craft sheet. And you can see they're double-sided, and the tones are slightly different, so you've got lots of options. I'm going to go, I think, with the light, the darker tone tonight. So let me work in my four corners with my snail adhesive, which I absolutely love. Easy and refillable. Works really well. Just press the little button here on the top and that pops off. And of course, a new one goes right inside and it's very affordable. There's a little knot here in the paper. Do you happen to see that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that at the top because I want that to be kind of visible. And I'm looking to leave a small frame of white cardstock all the way around. There's only a 1 8 of an inch border here. I am going to put all the cutting dimensions that you see tonight down in the video description here below when we're all done with the live, okay? The next step is going to be taking that piece of buffalo check. Remember, we cut this down, and I'm going to adhere that here on my card. So because that's small, I want to keep my work surface clean. I'm going to add adhesive to the back side, and I'm just going to add some strips just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to place that, oh, about two-thirds of the way down. And I'm looking just to kind of center it across the best that I can. You know, I'm not one for making things perfectly straight. I'll be real honest with you. But there we go. We've got that. Remember that tag? All right, I'm going to flip that over, and I'm going to use my dimensionals. These double-sided pieces of foam tape make my life so happy because it makes my project look very professional, and it's going to elevate it a little bit. Do you see this, too? This is the sign of a really good alcohol marker and great cardstock. That bleeding should happen because the alcohol is going to penetrate the paper, which is why it's important you protect your work surface when you're coloring. I'm going to place one more right here in the middle because I'm very cognizant that I'm going to be mailing this through the postage machine at the post office, and it's going to do a number on my card. So I want to make sure that the contents of my card are all balanced out while it goes through that machine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image and I'm going to mount it over here to the left side little bit down, the, most of it's going to be up, and I'm going to tack that in place. Now, I thought this was kind of plain. Now, you might like it, and it's fine, but I thought, I'm going to show you one other thing. I'm going to bring in my pierce mat, and I'm going to lay this on top of here, and I'm going to use a brad, and I chose the Metallic Brads assortment. Copper, silver, and gold, varying sizes and styles, lots and lots of fun, but ahead of time, because I didn't want to fuss through there while you guys were all watching, I pulled out a silver one. And I'm going to use my take your pick pickup tool to make the hole for that brad. Now let me talk to you a little bit about this tool if you don't have it. It is the best pickup tool on the market, hands down. First of all, $10 US price. There's a cap on both ends. I just happened to take this one off. The putty tip is going to allow you to pick up small pieces of cardstock and sequins with ease. And then you can cap it. This end here has a little dial mechanism, which allows you to turn it 
and pull out the spatula end. Look how filthy that is. Do you know how I use this? I get up underneath those dimensionals if I've made a mistake or underneath my adhesive if I've made a mistake and it allows me to kind of shift it to kind of straighten things out or to remove them. Those go down inside of here and then it just locks in place. It also comes with a dual-sided stylus tool that interchanges on here. And of course, there's a protective cap. Let me just grab that so I can show it to you that goes on here. Great way for you to make sure that it's safe while you're traveling with it. It also comes with a putty refill. So when this one's done, you simply unscrew it and just put the new one on. You cannot beat this for $10. I'm loving this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line this up here and I'm gonna poke a hole where I want that bread. So I'm gonna say, mm, I want it here. I am really careful to leave that in there because I don't know about you, but have you ever taken that out and you're trying to find the hole and you're like, did it go all the way through? So I leave it in my pierce mat so I have an idea of the placement and I'm gonna push that down and then I'm going to lift and then I'll turn this over and then I'll open up those prongs from the backside and I'll just flatten those out because I wanna make sure that's pretty good and flat. All right, I'm gonna push those off to the side move those dimensional backings a little bit, give you a little bit better, cleaner surface. And then I have my card base. This is real red, which coordinates with the ink pad we used for that Buffalo check background. One of the best things about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. The red is a true red on all of our product lines. You're gonna absolutely love that. So I've scored it just ahead before you join me and I'm gonna fold that in half and I'm grabbing my bone folder. I like to use that for that nice crisp crease on my cards. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that here. And I chose to use dimensionals just to get a little extra elevation. And just like we did with the tag, I am gonna be quite generous with these because I don't want a sagging card when it's received on the other end. So I like to work around the outside perimeter and I'm gonna add a couple more here down the center. And then what I'll do is I'll take off that paper backing. Now, sometimes I find when I'm holding my cardstock, it's actually harder for me to get them off. So I like to lay it on the table and then just peel them from there. But if you've ever had one of these and you're trying to get the paper off and you're finding that you're struggling, I wanna give you another tip. Go ahead and take your fingernail and press it inside the dimensional. That slight crease is going to lift the paper edge for you, making it a little bit easier for you to get off. I wanted to make sure I got them all. Oh, I did. All right, and then I'm gonna center this right here on the front of that card base, leaving a little bit of that red trim all the way around. Isn't that a sharp card? But remember, I told you that tonight things were gonna be a little bit different. I was actually using this exact same sketch, or if you will, layout to create a total of three cards. So here is the first one. Now I've got more for you. This next one is going to be using the stamp set called Fairy Celebration. Now, if you're just joining us, remember you can purchase all these products in my online store. Megan and I will go ahead and put a link down in the video description below when we're all done tonight with the live. Aren't these adorable? Super cute. And here is the card I created using this exact same sketch or layout. So here it is. All I did was I changed up the paper from this to this. My embellishments I added just from some sequins from the Twinkle Twinkle Little Sequin Assortant. Look at that little fairy. Do you see the glitter I put on her wings? Isn't she adorable? And just a change of ribbon up here at the top. And I just used the scallop tag photographer punch because I thought that worked really well with this style where I didn't feel that maybe it worked this well um, as well on this one. All right, so there's two. And then the next one is gonna be using this, the Fabulous Flamingo. This product is in the annual catalog as well. This stamp set is so much fun because, believe it or not, these images layer on top of this larger image to give you a great 3D look. And here is that third sample that I promised you. Same layout, do you see it? It's just a change up of the designer series paper and the colors. So these are all stamps. There was no coloring here whatsoever. Absolutely love that about this stamp set. It is called two-step stamping. And then just a small flower embellishment here to fill up that area. But those are the three cards that I've used tonight with that one sketch layout. I'm gonna to try to move you out just a little bit further to see if I can get you a better view of all three cards for some reason. My camera has frozen, so I hope you guys are able to see me. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna flip the camera around. Oh, 
Uh oh, I don't know if you can see me or not, but I'm here. It's frozen. Oh no, oh no. I don't know why. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I'm here, but you guys are not. Oh no. Oh, you know what? I guess I'll have to come out and come back in. Problem, can't see you. At least we got the card demo before it froze. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. 